handouts out to everybody. We're working on it now. They're coming now. So we're going to start a new series here called Navigating Life. And uh, Pastor Drew kind of came up with this concept. I thought it was a really good Holy Spirit inspired idea. And so we're doing it. Um, just a, a little uh, teaser thing here. We're having a leadership gathering today. And as always, everyone is welcome to come to the leadership gathering because even if you're not a leader, because maybe God will touch you and you will grow into a leader. So we're always working on that. Um, but I've got some special update information today just to get you to come to leadership gathering that you will not learn anywhere else. So you want to come to leadership gathering just to get the inside information. All right, so navigating life. And we're, well, there's a picture on the front there. That's uh, Rembrandt's uh, Sea of Galilee. This is where the disciples are in the boat with Jesus. And this is before he calms the storm. And this is normally how life feels, right? You're in the boat and things are going crazy. And why is God letting this happen? Uh, but he's in the boat and it's going to be okay. When Jesus says, to his disciples, let's go to the other side. Where are you going? To the other side. <laughs> you're you're going to get there. You're going to be all right. Uh, but fear gets a hold of us. Fear gets in the way, just like fear got a hold of Cheyenne. Uh, it's something she wants. She wants to get out of this institution. She wants to be in a family. Um, but she 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 wants to be in with our family. That's part of the thing. She was saying, Dad, I want to be in your house. And I said, well, they won't let me do that. So we've got to come up. We came up with another plan. It's going to be okay. But I couldn't tell her all that stuff. But fear grips you even when you, you're in a bad place and we need to change. Um, people will stay with what's comfortable, even though it's bad. Um, and uh, because we know it, we know what it is. So what fear does to you on page two there, fear can paralyze you. Fear steals your time, and time is precious, right? Time's doing this. We got, you know, we got these little blocks here. What do we call these things? You know, an hourglass clock, and it's just running, 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 running. It doesn't stop unless it runs out. But real time just keeps running and running and running, and you can't stop it. And if you start thinking about that, sometimes it, that can give you fear. You know, because, ah, what am I doing? Uh, fear can cause illness and disease. Uh, fear steals your dreams because instead of us actually acting on them, we go, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And instantly you've lost it, right? Because you don't try. Fear short circuits the rational processing pathway of your brain leading to paranoia. This is actually, you know, a physical phenomena that happens to us. So if you start getting into fear, it actually makes your brain malfunction. Fear weakens the immune system. Fear shuts down parts of the body. Fear can cause heart attacks. Fear events store sensory data deep in the memory, right on your DNA strands. Later, these memories, sight, smell, sound, touch, taste, can evoke fear, PTSD. And so these things pop up on us. Fear can corrupt good memories. You can actually have good memories, and then fears make you misinterpret them. Fear leads to impulsive behaviors. And not all impulsive behaviors are bad, but ones that are generated by fear generally are. Um, there will be stress in life. How will you react? Right? We, we know stress is coming. We're going to have to go to the job and the boss is going to tell us to do something we don't like to do. Or you're the boss and you got to go tell one of your employees something that they don't want to do. <laughs> and there's going to be stress. There's going to be fears. There's tests coming. There's... Uh, relationship problems coming. There's family problems coming. One of your kids is going to grow up or not grow up, uh, 
even though I have to be old, at any age is going to make some stupid choice. Right? We, we do it too. What do we do? Make stupid choices. Problems happen from that. There's going to be stress. How are we going to react? And, you know, this scripture in Acts 16 they end up in a really, really bad spot. Paul and Silas, they're in jail. And um, they were beaten. And what was the response? Acts 16, 25, around midnight, Paul and Silas were moaning and groaning and complaining. No, what were they doing? They were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake. The prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. There is power in praise, isn't there? The chains fell off of how many prisoners? All of them. Just you having the right attitude in a circumstance can actually change what's happening all around you. And even other people that are having problems can be transformed. All right. This is very important uh, practical things that you can do in terms of fighting fear. At the bottom of page five is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And we know other scripture says that we have the mind of Christ. So this scripture talks about renewing your mind in Christ. And so if we look at the top of the page four, the first thing that you need to do when we're running into anything in life, but especially fear, is declare your freedom by the power of the cross in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, once again, I've talked about this many, many times, but it has to be reiterated over and over and over again because we somehow think that when we pray in the name of Jesus, that we just said, this is going to happen abracadabra. That's, it's, in the name of Jesus is not a magic word. In the name of Jesus is, means you're stating your position as a submitted child of God and that you're lining up under his authority and his will. Then, when you're lined up under his authority and his will, then power is yours because you're in the chain of command. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, it means we're declaring in faith that God's word trumps what's going on around me in this world, and this is what's going to take place, not what the world is trying to put on me. Does that make sense? And so that's a powerful, powerful act of faith. But it's something that you actually have to do. For you to receive it, you have to state it and say, okay, this is mine. You know, Jesus was all the time saying, how come you're not having faith? How come you're not believing? How come you're not, you know, standing on my truth? And so we have to actually declare our freedom. So when that thing comes at you, you know, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, says that we take every thought captive that comes. So when Jesus is doing battle with the enemy and uh, in the desert and bad thoughts or, you know, you know, bad suggestions are coming from the enemy, he defeats them by speaking the word against them and declaring an authority. No, you know, man lives by, uh, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So whatever the enemy's stating, we say, no, that's not the way it works. This is what truth is. And I declare that in the name of Jesus. And that's how I'm going to live. Number two, confess God's word to renew your mind. If you're going to renew your mind in Christ, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. How are you going to renew your mind? By being in his word and speaking his word over your life. And that's when, you know, the Bible, the book itself, you know, sadly, all of us have, not all of us, where's your Bible at now, right? It's in my app, Bible app in my phone. But if we had a book up here that was the Bible, uh, that is not the word of God 
that contains the Word of God, right? It's the Word of God when it comes out of your mouth and you speak it. That's when it's the Word of God. So we have to speak it. So we have to confess it. We have to say it. Uh, that's why I think it's good you know, to read the Word of God out loud. I want to tell you about a really powerful event that happened with, uh, with Bear. Um, it, Bear had to go to the doctor with Debbie the year before, uh, a year ago, for his annual physical, and he had to get some shots, and he was not happy. Uh, he apparently was and still is really, really, really afraid of needles. So he told me, because now we're going back to the doctor, but now I'm taking him, right? And I don't know any of this stuff. I didn't do any of, any of that, okay? If people, I look like an idiot when I go into the doctor. Like, what's this? I, I don't know. I don't know anything. My wife did all that. I have no clue. You tell me. <laughs> so here we are. We get into the examination room. He find out he has to get three shots. And, and I'm like, so big deal. Needles don't bother me at all, you know. I, I've had Dr. Steve shoot me with stuff, you know, whatever, okay. I think he takes pleasure in finding the place that hurts the worst. And, and I flinch a little bit. He's got, he says, I got it now, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, so... You know, it's kind of weird when you don't have that fear and somebody else does, what do we do? We're like, well, come on, get it together, right? Um, so I'm just like, what? You're going to be okay. It's just a shot. He said, no. He said, last year, mom had to hold me down with everything she had so I could take the shot. So he's saying, you got to hold me down. He wants me to clamp his arms and pin him to the thing so he can't flinch. I'm like... Okay, now hang on. That's not how we're going to do it, you know. I said, do you remember your power verse? Your power verse that we've been working on in the family is you've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. He goes, yeah, 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 I know that. Okay, well, say it with me. And he says it. And I said, okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to say that verse while she's giving you the shots and everything's going to be fine and you're not going to have any problem. He looks like, okay, okay. And he starts saying it. She goes, boom, boom, boom. And it was over. And yeah. And he was so proud of himself that he had taken these shots without, you know, being terrified. And, and you know, that's a big leap in life, right? That real, you can overcome fear. And he was able to do that. It's the same thing we need to be doing. We've got to be you know, applying that kind of thing into our own lives and saying, okay, hey, I can overcome this, but I've got to have a little bit of faith. Now, the cool thing was that he accepted dad's word, right? Now, who's our heavenly father? And, and shouldn't we accept dad's word? Right? And, and, and that's what we need to do. So, okay, so uh, prayer... Look at bullet point two of prayer. You can read some of this stuff later. Um, scientists have discovered that when we are actively blessing others or saying thanks to God for his many gifts to our lives, the neuron path to worry and fear is literally blocked. So if you can spend time in prayer in which the prayer is not, oh, God, help me all the whole time, but God, I know I trust you. I bless you. I thank you for all the good things you've poured in my life. When you get in the thanks and, and, and blessing the Lord, what happens is the fear and worry path is actually shut down. You can't do it. Isn't that cool? So anytime when you're getting into that place, so when Paul and Silas started singing, what were they doing? Shutting down the fear pathway. Actually close that thing down. That's super cool. Meditation, you know, I've been spending lots of time meditating since Debbie went to heaven, you know, because there's lots of fears that can come in and worries about how are we going to do this? How are we going to handle that? What's this going to, what's going to happen? Um, number five, serve in God's kingdom. And a lot of people will say, oh, I'm too wounded to serve. A lot of times you have to exercise to get better. 
You know, when they took out 80% of my liver, 24 hours later, you know what they were making me do? Walk down the hallway. You know, if I had any kind of ability to fight back, I would have, you know. But here I am walking down the hallway 24 hours after having 80% of my liver taken out. It might have been 36. But at any rate, you have to do things sometimes. So even if your life's not perfect, or even if you've got some fears and you're not sure you can do something as best as you could, we need to get in the game and do something even if it's just creeping down the hallway and serve the kingdom because healing and strength comes from that. Because the next day when you walk down the hallway, I could stand up straighter in the third day, in the fourth day. And then when they said, if you can go around here twice, you can get out of here. I'm like, let's go. I want to go home. So strength comes when you use your muscles, when you use your mind, amen? Uh, relationships, uh, so here's all kinds of other good ways. And things that we need to be doing to renew our mind and make ourselves stronger and chase fear out of our lives. Uh, perfect love casts out all fear. I love the way that Eugene Peterson has paraphrased this wonderful passage on love from 1 John, God is love. When we take up our permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house. Isn't that a cool phrase? Love has the run of the house. It becomes a home and mature in us so that we are free of worry on judgment day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ. Listen to that. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ. There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment is one not yet fully formed in love. So we've got to be putting love in the house, chasing fear out, and we're going to be a lot better off. I got a whole bunch of practical stress busters there that you can read. Um, but look at the first passage in the overcoming fear passages. Deuteronomy 31.6. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Fears come into life, and we've heard these, this expression many times, but courage is not the absence of fear, it's what? It's overcoming fear, it's walking through the fear, it's walking past the fear. It's, it's nothing courageous for me, you know, to you know, confront somebody that's half my size. But to confront somebody who's got a gun, right? Now fear comes into the picture because I don't have the power to overcome that person. And that's when courage has to jump into the situation. And that's like the recent synagogue shooting when that guy chased, you know, he, he charged the guy with the gun. That's what? Courage. So, you know, because you feel afraid isn't a bad thing. But when the fear comes, we got to choose courage instead of cowering and allowing the fear to overwhelm us and run us down. And then I want to, you know, go back to the power verse, go back to the cover. And there's tons of good scriptures there to help you get strengthened against fear. But I really believe that as a, as a gathering, we need to get this scripture so ingrained in us. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Any fear that comes in is from where? The enemy. Fear comes from the enemy. He has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And that's a great triumvirate right there. Right? That's, those are three powerful, powerful assets that we have. Power, love, and a sound mind. So with a sound mind, that means you don't have to melt down. This is one of the things, you know, I've got several of my 
kids, the, the little ones that are susceptible to meltdowns. But this scripture is helping us have less and less and less. That's why that's the first scripture I went to. And we keep going over it again and again and again. And I said, look, you're melting down on me, but what's your power verse? Ah, oh, not been given a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Because, you know, the attitude right then, right? So you got a sound mind. Yeah, I got a sound mind. All right, so let's use that thing. Stop melting down. Quick, before somebody spanks you. I don't know who's going to do that. And, but it works because, and the more that we say it, the more that we talk about it, the stronger they say it. And since Bears had that good event with the doctor, he's like, yeah, hey, it works. Okay? And that reinforces it among all the other kids. And so as a gathering, man, memorize the scripture. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, or as I always mix it up and say, I always say love, power, and a sound mind, but it still works, right? Keep, let's just keep saying that scripture over and over and over again, and let's, every time the enemy brings fear to say, I've not been given a spirit of fear, I reject the spirit of fear. This is not mine in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm submitted to his authority, I'm aligned up here, and I'm not receiving this, and it has no function or power in my life. Because I've got power, I've got love, and I've got a sound mind, and I'm going to be courageous. Right? Okay, let's stand up and pray. We're going to sing. Heavenly Father, I know fear, worry, anxiety, it's pervasive in our culture. It's pervasive in our families. It's so easy to get caught up in. Sometimes we're just concerned about something and then the enemy turns it into full-blown anxiety. And so, Father, we choose to praise you and bless your name. We, we choose to shut down that fear pathway in our brain in Jesus' name. We choose to be courageous, full of power, full of love, and working with a sound mind because that's what you have given us, and we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people who did said, amen. amen.